Do you know that if we take 1,000 people and scan them, 5 to 20 of them will have disc prolapses on their scans. Males will be double the females. But don't worry if you're one of those unlucky people with a herniated discs. 9 out of 10 people symptoms will get better on their own without surgical treatment. This is Mohammed. This is Abby. This is the Neurosurgeon's channel. And this is the only place where you find two neurosurgeons talking to you about everything about the brain and spine. Today's video will be talking about the lumbar disc prolapse, how is that diagnosed and treated. To start with, we'll be talking about how the disc prolapse will present. So if you have a disc prolapse, there are two main symptoms that can happen. These are the back pain and the leg pain. If the disc is injured in your back, this will create back pain and muscle spasms. The pain can be as light pain in the background that doesn't bother you or can be very severe that limits your mobility and you're not able to mobilize as usual. If you develop leg pain, this means that the disc prolapse is getting big enough to cause compression on the nerve and that will cause pain down your leg in the distribution of the nerve supply of this area. As we mentioned in our previous video, there are some symptoms that you need to look out for which mean you need to get medical attention urgently. We call these red flag symptoms as we mentioned before some of the things that you should look out for specifically are loss of control of your bladder or bowel, severe pain going down both your legs, or any tingling around the front or back passage. So how the disc prolapse is diagnosed? The best way to diagnose a disc prolapse is by doing an MRI scan. Other tests like the CT and X-ray are not very good in showing the disc prolapse. We will be making more videos in the future to talk in more detail about the difference between these three tests. So if you go to your doctor with back pain, it's unlikely that he will jump and do an MRI scan immediately, unless your doctor sees a risk factors or red flag symptoms as we mentioned earlier. The likelihood that your doctor will start you on some medication for the pain, and if the pain is getting worse or you're developing more uh, symptoms, then he will order you an MRI scan. So, Addy, let's say I have a disc prolapse, is that going to get better or worse? So that's a really common question that we get in the outpatient clinic. So for about 6 out of 10 patients, their symptoms thankfully will resolve spontaneously at about 6 weeks. Uh, 7 to 8 of the 10 patients will have a resolution of their symptoms in 3 months and those remaining will unfortunately continue to experience some of their pain and other symptoms. This is especially true if the people presenting with pain continue to involve themselves in the activities that provoke them in the first place, such as heavy labour or lifting with improper technique. The good news is that treatment for the disc prolapse is not always surgical. Surgery will only be required in 1 out of 10 patients with disc prolapse. Some other treatments which are non-surgical include pain medications, this can help with the back pain, and also some other pain medications which can help with the pain that radiates down your leg. Other medications are in the form of muscle relaxants which helps to relax the spasm in your back muscles. And sometimes you can take tablets that can help you to sleep if needed. There are also other treatments which are non-medical which are available to help treat your back and leg pain. These include things like physiotherapy where a trained physiotherapist will guide you through exercises which will strengthen the muscles of your back and core. Other treatments are injections in and around the nerve, which can help with your pain going down your leg. And there are also alternate medications or medical therapies, such as acupuncture, which may help. If unfortunately your symptoms are getting worse, you might be considered for surgery, which is called discectomy. And discectomy means taking the disc prolapse out. As you can see in this picture, we are pushing the nerves away and trying to get into the disc prolapse and take it out and make sure that the nerves are all free in all directions. There are several techniques to do the discectomy operation. However, we will need to make more videos in the future to explain in more details about these different techniques. The main aim of surgery is to stop deterioration of your symptoms and to help with the pain. In most of the patients, the leg pain will improve directly after the operation. However, in some other patients, the 
pain would improve in about six to eight weeks. So don't get worried if your pain is not improving 100% after the operation. The details of a microdiscectomy operation are an entire video in themselves, which Mohammed and I will make. If you want to find out more information in the interim, you can learn about some of the figures about benefits and risks of this operation on the British Association of Spinal Surgeons website, which we'll link down below.